Broadcasting on Star Worldwide Networks. It's Two Small Biz Guys. And now, here are your hosts, Zen Benefiel and Ray Silverstein. Oh yeah, we're here. Hi, this is Zen, and welcome to Two Small Biz Guys. Ray, how are you doing today? I am doing super, and this is Ray. We are we are the Biz Guys. Yeah, two. What small. Kind of, no, we're not that small, but the question is what kind of biz? The small, tall guys. Yeah, what kind of biz? We're, we're into the, uh, mis- the mischievous biz. The mischievous biz. And today we're going to be very entrepreneurial because it's in our blood. Yeah, it's in our blood. We're going to be talking about entrepreneurial DNA, and it's no junk science. Oh, okay. Ah, speaking uh, of DNA, you know, it, it's amazing that uh, DNA really, you know, I mean, there's, the science is finding that there's a, all kinds of things that it's finding Actually, I just said that, didn't I? So we're understanding that there's much more that DNA gives to us that we can understand and actually utilize. And one of the things that Joe Abrams found out was that, hey, you know, there's an entrepreneurial DNA. Well, I think we're talking about personality type of format. And there's a lot of studies as to personality profiles, assessments, et cetera. And Mr. Joe Abrams has come up with what he calls entrepreneurial DNA, and that's the name of his book, Mm -hmm. and has some interesting aspects, uh, primarily if you're thinking about going into business, he talks about uh, what is your your DNA, and what is the best type of business for you. And it's how you think, it's how you act, it's how you feel, it's how you approach things, it's all wrapped into that, kind of like disc assessments and, and, you know, the problem-solving communication preferences. Yeah. Only that it's just a little different. Yeah, and also how you behave and how you know, don't behave. Uh, don't behave. Oh, don't whine. Okay. <laughs> well, the aspect is he talks about four different styles, and he really calls his program the Bosi B O S I. And by the way, and by the way, that's B T W. Yeah, I, you're learning. Yes. All right, he's picking like up that? acronyms. Gosh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> so you know, it, was that, speaking of that, it was yes. very interesting. Uh-oh. The other night we go for a walk. And Here we a, go. There's a, no, the true story. And a gal is walking a dog. And she says, listen to this. And she starts singing a song. Oh, she calls the dog Broadway. And she starts singing a Broadway song. And the dog goes, rawr, rawr, barking or riff to the song. So we got a musical dog. So, okay, so let's so that's go that's a Broadway on. tune that was of Broadway another tune. sort, huh? Well, it was very interesting. Ooh, too bad it wasn't a horse. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> well, then anyway. We, okay, then we horse around. But all right. right. So you can actually go to our website and you'll notice the article for this week's show. You'll have a link there that you can go take the Bozy or Bozy survey. So you can tell what kind of of entrepreneurial DNA you have and you can't do it just yet, but you might be able to, or you might know already so that some of the things we'll be talking about might make sense. Well, the premise here is that everybody has a little bit of some of these and he talks about what is your dominant one. So again, he identifies four I'd different styles. I'd rather be styles. submissive. I know you are, but we don't have that one. Is one of the categories. Right. Okay. That that comes maybe after the show. Right. But he talks about B as a builder, uh, and O is an opportunist, and S is a what is an S? It's a specialist. A specialist. And, and the I is innovator. A, and there's a lot of that going on today. That's right. So the as- but the aspect is the innovator has a very interesting personality because they really aren't managerial orientated. They're really more inventive or no. So orient- they got their head in the head in the clouds most of the time. Right. Well, they want attempting give- to find the ground. Yeah. Right. What the- they give them their own little room and let them work away at doing something. That's what they really enjoy All right. doing. So we'll cover that eventually. Let- let's look at the quadrants uh, first of all. Right. There's- so there's. Basically four quadrants. There's upper, lower, left corner. Well, but before uh, you get right. to the quadrants, let's lay out the Bose format, because B. I thought that's what I was doing. Okay, but the upper, the upper left hand corner is the B. Right. Upper right hand corner is the O. Lower left hand corner is the S, and the lower right hand corner is the I. So builders left, opportunist is upper right, lower left is specialist, and lower right is innovator. Right. So he talks about the quadrants. Oh yes, I see that you have it down there. Very, I very do. good. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so moving on. 
So the aspect is, he talks about the various quadrants, and he says it's interesting that the B and the O, and that doesn't mean you have B-O, but the B and the O are on the, and they're on the top. And the premise is, is that they both are very entrepreneurial, more so than the S and the I. Than the S and the I. But they like to build businesses, and they're very uh, more higher risk takers than the S or the I. Right. They're, they're driven, focused, they're kind of cold, actually. Often ruthless and calculating. Well, so they, they like to control people. Well, that's more of the B. I thought that's control. what. But they, they both are. Wasn't that what you were talking about? Well, but they're both, they're, they're both control. <laughs> <freaks. laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 can't see, I can't get the words out there. I'm so excited about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the good thing you're excited. Okay, so, so the so aspect the loves love building a business from the ground up. The O are more, the opportunist is speculative. They're, they're an entrepreneur, you know, that, that's kind of in all of this. Well, but, um, the only, but the difference is they want to make money quick. Uh, the opportunist is... They uh, want to seize the opportunity. They want to seize the opportunity. So basically an opportunist, uh, according to his, uh, his studies, is that they really aren't a builder from the start. They really are an, a, builders, a business that they go into that they'll buy that they'll maybe are employed and take over, but they're really not a builder from the very beginning. Whereas a builder or the B will start a building. There might be startup people and they're very much into organization. The O is very strong into sales. They're, they're basically a sales animal. So they're a people pusher. Uh, well, people pusher in respect of sales, not right. people pusher in respect of management. Right. Well, sales, you got to get people motivated. No, you don't have to get people motivated because you can't motivate people. They have to motivate themselves from within. Anyway, what they do is that they push those people to become inspired and motivated to make the sales as fast as possible and, and ramp the business up. Right. And the Second I, phase of growth, I guess, right. right? As far as the product curve. And they talk about the S. And the S is kind of interesting because when you compare it to the disc, the disc talks about the S is 50% of the population. And here he also talks so these, about that the S in the DNA is also 50% of the population. And they stick around for a while. And most people would rather stick around for a while and move from things to thing. You know, change is not comfortable for most people. Right, but they're also very steady. And they, as you say, they like to stick around. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're re really much into some type of like competitive type of business. I don't mean competition, but something which is repetitive and steady and very predictable and, and they build their expertise over that time too so they they become a known expert or a go-to person for everybody in the company when there's problems to be solved right right and the i is i uh, yeah i because they basically are saying i got a great idea that's why i call them eyes i can do this more than the two more than the two right so the i is a people who are really create are the world changers because they have a, they say the world is, we don't like the world the way it is. We want to change it, improve it, enhance it. So they're always looking to make an enhancement, whether it be product, service, or whatever. So they won't give it Sounds them, almost kind of like an Edison where you try 99 times to make something before you come up with a light bulb. Yeah. You know, so Edison said, like when he failed 99 times or whatever it was, he didn't look at it as a failure. He said, oh, that's one less. I don't have to worry about them. Then you had on Tesla the next over one. on the side that had much better success rates, but nobody uh, really cares about that. Well, but that's a different S. That's between AC and DC. Yeah, and we're not going to go. Well, we're not going to get into AC and DC, are we? <laughs> 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 so ten, the tendency for innovators is to really kind of stumble on things and find that uh, breakthrough invention. Yeah, but the interesting part is that they have to have the recognition that they stumbled on it. So the aspect is uh, you can you can be out there stumbling and maybe not even recognize the value what you stumbled on. So the innovator has You're that You're just innate. falling a lot, huh? So you're, they, you're practicing getting up and yeah. never getting recognition for yeah. being able to get back up. Well, you have to be, but you know, the aspect is, is that you have to have a lot of willpower to do that. So there's, you know, there's a strength there to do this. Wonderful. Oh, we just got we just got a high sign. That's all. Or was that was that an eye or was that the high sign? That was a high sign. It oh, was, okay. hello. Well, it was that finger anyway. Um, now, despite the differences, the builder and opportunist have a lot of things in common, yes. and they fall in the top quadrant. We're going to be talking more about that 
in the next segment, which I know you're going to want to hear. Right. But you'll also, if you can go to our website, you can take the free uh, DNA and find out what your entrepreneurial DNA. Yeah, you can find DNA. out what your entrepreneurial DNA actually is. So where uh, do they go, Zen? They go to twosmallbizguys.com. That's With the, the number, numeral two, numeral two, small biz, B-I-Z, guys, Dot com. And with that, we'll be right back with you. Thanks for listening. Two Small Biz Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. Are you a small business owner looking for education and information and don't have time for school? Is there an area of your business you'd like to know more about but aren't sure where to go or who to ask? Practical Biz U is an online repository of small business courses now available to you on the web. There are single class options, bundles for specific areas, and monthly memberships for ongoing learning opportunities. Go to practicalbizu.com and sign up today. Business owners want to call their own shots, make appropriate income, and control their destiny. Our passion is to help you achieve your goals. A ProPeer Advisory Board is just the thing. It's a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners facilitated by a pro who has walked in your shoes. He's your mentor and tormentor moving you ahead. When you have issues or opportunities keeping you awake, where do you get help? Pro Boards give support and non-biased feedback from your peers. To sample a free Pro President's board meeting, email ray at propres.com. There's no commitment or charge. Email ray at propres.com. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefio and Ray Silverstein. They say patience is a virtue. I tried oh. to jump in way too early there. Oh, we did. Couldn't okay. hear myself. Oh, my gosh. Do you talk to yourself? Is that All it? the time. Oh, my It's when gosh. I answer that I kind of that's, start wondering. And that's, so does everybody else around that, me. That's absolutely correct. When you, when you come up with that answer, we say words of, we don't know. Right. Words of wisdom. Okay. Uh, maybe so maybe gonna, some wit. So, so now we're going to talk about the words of the builder for a while and the strength of the builder. Right? Yes, absolutely. So the builder DNA at it, its best, right, thrives in environments where systems, like you were talking earlier, can be built quickly and then scaled up. Right. So a builder basically is your, what you might call them a serial entrepreneur in the respect that they start a business, they build it up. Uh, they get they're magically it, delicious. And they get bored with it. And well, that's a different serial. Okay. And, they, and they move on to the next. That's a different serial. I, I haven't heard of that one. And they move on to a different type Lucky of charms. activity. So now if you said Rice Krispies, I could understand that story. Snap, crackle, pop. No, yeah. the, lo- <laughs> I was talking about Lucky Charms. I, okay, well. Yeah, I had those when I was a kid. Well, you know, to be a builder, you have to have a Lucky Charm. Because you you're do. starting from scratch, so you need to have that serial aspect. And you need to put in the process and the procedure. But you also have to be a sales-orientated person. And you also have to be risk adverse to a great degree because your highest risk is starting a business. Most right. businesses fail within the first two and a half years. And so you've got to be able to pick things up and, and roll it. And, but one of the things that they really don't like is the monotonous, repetitive, and things that aren't scalable. Right. So the most exciting thing in business, at least i found, is always working on the new thing mm-hmm. because the old thing becomes kind of old hat. But the S personality likes the steadiness, but going back to the builder, they they want to have the innovation of how do I how do I move this, or if they if it becomes old hat to them, they basically want to sell the hat store, and move on to something of a new idea, a new concept that they've come up with. Mm-hmm. And you know, like you say, the thrill of building new things and solving complex problems is what builders thrive on. Right, but what happens when they can't control it anymore? When things aren't to their expectation? Well, they're not happy campers. No, they're not. They, they go from being a bee to they being They yell a... and scream and stomp and shout and try to control everybody around them. To, right. To... So, so on the upward cycle, they're very good with people. On the downward cycle, they're very impatient. And, therefore, and you don't want to be around them. Right. Well, that's kind of extreme. But what happens <laughs> is, is that you, you have the positive on the upside, but on the downside, they're really not that uh, 
they don't work well with the others. They don't play well at that point. No, they don't. They get overly aggressive and frustrated and disappointed in individuals about the situation. So they don't really differentiate between the situation and the individual. They transfer their frustration with the situation to the individual. Right. Also, they start off being very good delegators. Uh, or maybe they maybe they just don't delegate. Maybe yeah, they what just, is that that you say? Why should I do well what, what I don't want don't no, need to do at there, all? There's no sense doing well that I should not be doing at all. Right. So it, so but when businesses when it starts going the wrong way, so then you, all of a sudden they want so to you're saying that, Are you a B? Yeah. I'm, when I took the Bose test, yeah, because, yeah, I'm primary. I'm a, I'm primarily a B. I could see that. So that so my 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 major entrepreneurial strength was a B. Yeah, you just want things. Yeah, I just done. Want, yeah, just get it done. Yeah, right. I don't care how you do it. Just go do it. You just I don't need well, the details. Yeah, right. I don't. Now, if it doesn't well, go right, for? No. now if it doesn't go right, then you say, okay, why didn't it go right? And you get in the details, so then you become a pain to others. But the aspect is at a B because you got questions. So a B really wants nobody to move likes things to answer forward. questions, right? But, well, questions are the it, a good questions are more important than the answers because if you have to ask questions, then you can get the right answer. And oftentimes the, those questions are what separate the men from the mice. That's right. So the aspect is, what are, what are good types of business for a bee? And turnarounds are always, well, turnarounds are very invigorating. They're, you know, they're fun because you're, they're not just your problem to start off with. So you get to step in. Yeah, and, and it's sink or swim and you don't really care. Well, there's a high-risk-reward aspect because yeah. you're putting a lot of time and energy into it. You're putting a lot of sweat equity into a turnaround. And the, I guess and that's why, you know, without, with the attitude of, you know, there's really, yes, you want it to be successful, but with the ability to take the risks, there's no real attachment to the outcome. You're just going like crazy and whatever happens will happen. And well, you hope I, it'll happen to the benefit and you'll... Well, make the I, turnaround because you make your best efforts, and those kind of people generally have the the intelligence and, and the expertise to move things like that along, or they wouldn't be there. Well, I th I think there is a big risk, and the risk is ego, because uh, there's you, no ego without we go. Oh, that's that's why when you hit with a B, you want a we go because we're going to say we go and get this done. Yeah, we go. So, we going to go out. So the aspect is, I think there's a risk in everything, and they do have a high degree of drive because they uh, because of ego because of self-esteem to get this achieved uh but your builder basically wants to start a business from scratch because it's it's the the challenge now when you move into the uh, pardon me to the o the opportunist they have a different type of format they really want something to be successful very quickly so what happens in that type of circumstance is that they really are a good business for them to get involved with is where they buy an existing business because they, they don't want to put the processes in. Mm -hmm. uh, a franchise is very good because a franchise generally comes with the process being part of the format. And they're looking for a very fast return. So the premise is that they don't have to scale it up because of, in theory, the scale is already there because someone's invented the wheel. Yeah, they're just going in, taking over, reaping the benefits, and then they're gone. Right. So... Or with the other premises is that they say, I've been so successful. Or they sell it. Or, or generally what they might do is they say, I'm so successful in A, I can do B, C, and D. And therefore they get B, C, and D going, which kind of drains their activity. Because the premise is, uh, I was so successful with this first company, I can do companies, I can do others, I can do anything. Hey, that's a, sure, I can do anything. Well, what, Right. Right. Um, well, you know, anything is possible. And also, I'm still trying to figure out what anything is. <laughs> and, also, and also the O. Who the hell is, is anything? Okay. And also the O is very, very sales driven. So they are probably your, you know, your strongest sales people. So uh, when you get involved in a sales discussion, you know, they talk about hunters, binders. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so the, I would say that your O's are really more of your hunter type of personality. So then what you're saying is that a great combination would be a builder opportunist. It, you know, uh, it as a one-two punch for the leadership of an organization. Yeah, it could be very exciting because yeah. the, the builder is there to would foster the idea. The, the O is there to really say, I want to drive this thing and get the sales. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good combination. So the BO has a nice scent. And, oh, yes. It, oh, 
It, but the B.O. is a, a great aroma. It's not a scent, it's an aroma. Yes, so. yes. So with the, the opportunist DNA, though, it, the, um, the startups are really kind of a red flag. They don't like them, which is why they, would, they work well with before builders. The, yeah, right. And also, startups take a while before they really start to generate anything. So the aspect is, when we talked about the builder, uh, what, are the, what are the best strategies for the builder? Uh, so there's really... Well, the, one of the things that they do initially is that they optimize their business model. Right. Right. They really um, cut they, the fat well, away. They, well, they create the process. Right. And the process means that you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. When something happens, you know what, how to handle it. Uh, they also optimize the structure, which you're talking about cutting away the fat and mm -hmm. being, uh, giving the best service capabilities. They also will optimize the development of both the people and the organization and the distribution. A lot of times today, we haven't talked that much about distribution, but when people go into business, you have to think about how I'm going to distribute and how I'm going to get to the customer, right. how, the end customer. So they're, they're very strong on that. And also, as your O is also very strong. And they're very good at optimizing the relationships as long as you're on the upswing. And then when they have to be very careful on the downswing, if there is one. So, and they also want to surround themselves with good people. Well, you know, you do peer advisory groups. So what you're, as what I see with this kind of framework is that there's a, a great opportunity to build a, a, at least a, a small advisory group within the organization, right? Well, within or without. The question is, will, uh, sometimes you have to have people outside the organization only because they have independent thought. When sometimes you're in the organization, you get so close to it. Oh, yeah, you, you get lost. Outside. Yeah, you can't see the forest for the trees. Um, and having an outsider is great. But in the process, though, you really want to have a, a strong core team that's able to come together and, and poke holes in things and you find know. solutions yeah, but I think together. That, well, I think that's true in any business activity is that people, Absolutely. people need some type of mentor or advisory team or whatever you want to call it uh, to keep them on the straight and narrow and also raise questions because sometimes you we talked about before that sometimes you have to raise the right question in order mm -hmm. to know what the answer is. So and then I, one of the, I guess finally in the strategy category for the, they really need to have a plan for the work-life balance because they can get way, they're like workaholics. They get way out of balance with work and they forget about life. Yeah, you know, I've never seen that happen, but yes. <laughs> you know, especially, <laughs> especially, in the, especially in the startup environment. Right. Because uh, the startup environment can become, uh, they become like the child. They do. And, and so there's a, a necessity, you know, any time you launch in an area or launch towards something like that, you've got to be cognizant of the other aspects of your life and keep everything in balance. Otherwise you get sick, you get um, all stressed out. It, you got all kinds of things that are potential um, well, that, that and problems. Also, but also the theory is if you also have some balance, you are really more productive and you are more creative. And therefore the aspect is, is that when you step back, sometimes you accomplish far more when you come back in so you, when you're always there, it becomes overwhelming. And right, so, and you get to the point where you're do, do, do. do, do and yeah, you, you got the do, do going do, do, on. Do. Oh, yeah, okay. you, you're, you're do, doing all over the place. And, and you're forgetting that, hey, you got to stop and smell the roses. Right. Right. So when there's a, an opportunity for, not to, you're being an opportunist, but that's um, essentially what, happens is, is that you get that balance and you move forward. So um, before we, we get into the third section here, let's talk a little bit about the uh, strategies for the opportunists. Okay. So well, similarly, they optimize the business. So they build versus leverage. Uh, they don't start their own business. They optimize. So they, they go all in. They pick one business venture and make that commitment rather than try and do multiple things they optimize their team so that they create their own advisory board rather than having an outsider or in it it's all uh, pretty much within the company and they counter impulsive side or their impulsive side 
with an objective group of advisors, oh, right? So I'm, this is what we were talking about earlier. And the thing is, I couldn't have said this better myself. Oh, good, good, good. No, I don't, <laughs> so they optimize their team. They have a coach. Uh, they optimize credibility. And they optimize the work-life balance plan, which is a little better than what the builder could do. And finally, they have their personal leadership development plan that they actually know how they're going to create and the why for the personal development. Right, so they've got the integrity, the vision and mission and a decision matrix that they are able to work within the, this DNA structure. Right. So, right. but the the opportunist basically wants to make a killing quickly. The builder basically was brick by brick by brick, and the opportunist wants to buy the wall in the first place. So they're all set to move. Speaking so, of move, we're going to move right out of here for a moment. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Two small biz guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. As a business owner, have you ever felt alone at the top? You don't have to be. Ray Silverstein has worked with many business owners for over 20 years facilitating peer advisory boards. He is the proverbial mentor and tormentor. A pro president's peer advisory board is a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners that give support, feedback, and knowledge. They know the adage, all of us are smarter than one of us. He has walked in your shoes, having owned and sold two companies with sales in excess of $60 million and approximately 1,300 employees. In Young President's organization, he participated in peer advisory boards and felt it was a key to his success. His passion is to help small business owners succeed. He knows peer boards work when you are open, don't feel like you know it all, are willing to put issues on the table, and willing to take criticism. Be his guest at a pro advisory board meeting to see if it works for you. There's no commitment to join, and you'll have a great experience. To sample a free pro business owner peer board, email ray at proprez.com. That's ray at proprez.com. There's no commitment or charge. Hi, I'm Zen Benefield with Be The Dream Transformational Life Coaching and Professional Services at BeTheDream.com. Our mission? To provide leading-edge transformational personal and business development services. Our services include life coaching, enterprise coaching, partnering facilitations, and possibilities coagulating. We've been in business since 1988. In times of massive change, you need someone who can help you adjust and transform. I can meet that challenge with you, offering a stellar skill set from serving individuals and companies for over 20 years. I invite you to peruse BeTheDream.com and put me to the test. Fill out the coaching assessment survey and give me a call. The first call is free and you can find out if I'm what you are looking for in a coach, consultant, or service provider. Call 480-633-7179. Let your dreams mold future realities. Be the dream. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefield and Ray Silverstein. We're back. Gosh, you're a mind reader. I was just thinking, Ray, why don't you take the lead in on this section? Yeah, you hey. like you like that. Wow. Wow. We're back. That's scary. Yeah, that's... Uh-oh. We're having some floating DNA going on here. So the question is, we were talking about builders and specialists, and we uh, we were going to talk a little bit about... I thought we were talking about builders and opportunists. Oh, you're, you're right. I, I Again, I can't, see, I can't see those words, but you're right. Uh-oh. You're right. We were talking about builders and opportunists. See, right. So now we're going to go to specialists and innovators. See, the aspect is, since I have a builder personality, I like the specialists because they take care of all the dirty work. Mm-hmm. I should call it. They clean work. up. Yeah, the, you, know, you come up with a sometimes great they idea. clean up well. Yeah. They wear funny clothes sometimes, though. Well, they, 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 yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. So the specialist. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know? So the specialist, is, yeah, the specialist is really a key to many of the businesses, and it's interesting that the specialists basically are people who like to formulate a business and stick with it for a long, long time. And basically, as they stick with it, they feel their skills grow, their capabilities grow. Uh, they're normally not very good in sales. Their selling format or branding is basically built, built on their expertise or what they perceive as their expertise. 
So you find a lot of CPAs as, as a generalization are specialists. Lawyers, again, as a generalization are specialists. Uh, you might even take people in the medical world. Doctors are specialists in the respect that their thinking is that they are experts, that they're very much in the expert aspect and they followed a very set routine, a very set format. Pretty uh, much everything's the same on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, a, strong, a very strong discipline. Very patterned, habitual, regimented. Uh, now, are you saying that in a negative term? But no. That's, that's a very positive, those are very positive strengths no. that they bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's not a consequence. Or is it a consequence? Well, that's... A, is it good or bad? I well, don't know. Truth, you decide. Truth or consequence, is that it? <laughs> am I showing my age yeah. when I say that? So, Who am I? What do yeah. I do? Am I the real one? Okay. So, so the aspect is when you put a specialist together with a builder, you have a very fine team because the specialist takes care of, as I said before, takes care of a lot of the procedural type work that the builder gets bored with. And you find that you know, they, they are really the ones that cross the T's, dot the I's, and take care of the business and bring a stability and repetitiveness to the, build, to the business that the builder really doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, the specialists are also known for kind of bringing high-touch products and services. So they're, very, they're a lot more touchy-feely, so a lot more people-oriented mm -hmm. than... The others, let's say. Right. Well, and, and as you mentioned, you know, you've got doctors and lawyers and CPAs, and, and these are all folks, with the exception of CPA, um, that, that, and they may have a lot of human or, contact or, too. Or retailers. I mean, you can put a mm -hmm. retailer in that category because a retailer is very, very customer service orientated. Uh, they're also very, very touchy feely because they have to be, and they're also in a business which is very repetitive. Is that orientated? Orientated or tint, well, whatever. Now you're oriented. Getting, no, it's orientated because we want to paint with pretty colors. Yes, we do. Okay. Hey, good. Hey, we can spin that any okay. way we want. Okay. So the specialists, then the strategies that optimize them, how do they figure those things out? What's a good strategy for a specialist? Well, a good strategy for a specialist is to be in a business that really requires a certain amount of expertise. And they really will grow on their expertise. So when you talk about well, what really works for them. Wouldn't they have like a, a, the vision and mission of what they're doing is a lot more important. I right? they, they have to have that in line. Well, okay. I think it's more, I don't, it's probably important, but I don't know if it's more important than it is to the builder. It's probably more important than it is to the opportunist because the opportunist, their vision and mission is basically to make money and move on. Right. I mean, they're, they're driven by, by money. The builder, I think, is driven by the achievement. The innovator is driven by the creation of the product. So there is a different passion of each one of these. Well, and the specialist is more driven you know, by uh, main line of education, past employment, or apprenticeship at one point that then moves them into that specialist realm. Right, and also I think their, by, their byline would be get it right uh, because we want to do it right because we're experts. Yeah, if you're going to do it, do it right or don't do it at all. Gosh, that sounds like my, my father. Well, what do, you, what do your father say to you? If you're going to do something, do it right. And how did you feel about that? I, I learned, you know, of course, you, you know, you, as, you as a kid, you do stuff half-assed and, and you're just like, oh, I'll work, you know, I, 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 but no. The, the more time you take to get it right, the less time you'll have to take to go back and fix it. Oh, okay. Right? But there's also one aspect, which is a little bit different, when we're off, is that to get it right, is, in other words, a perfectionist, high competence, is also a question of uh, just wanting to procrastinate. Right. So, oh, yeah, and I, I know as an author, you know, I, I, I wanted to have everything, just all my structure and mechanics and grammar and everything just perfect and the storyline flowing. And, and, you know, there comes a point where you, you just got to publish. Yeah. Get it out of the way. Yeah. So, so you want to get it so right that no one ever gets a chance to read it. Right. 
That does a lot of good. So what you need is you either need a builder to move you along, or maybe an opp- but see an opportunist once they're already done already, and then they're going to run. Well, with see, it. like you said before, though, we have aspects of those. So being polyphrenic, polyphrenic, uh, or poly- yeah, I was polyphrenic too. Um, I probably want a cracker. I was so crackers, and I lost the nuts. <laughs> You're, so, you're being polyphrenic or whatever it is. Yeah, polyphrenic. So I called on my builder aspect to come in and, and boost me along and just like in the innovator to or the opportunist to just get it out there, get the thing done, yeah. get it out of your hair. So the aspect, and wow, that was so freeing to okay. be able to do that. Okay, so what you said was that you have a... But it wasn't comfortable to begin with. Okay, so you say in your format, you were probably a, a specialist as your primary DNA. And... It, but then in you, that respect, but, yeah, but, I but think then that you, then you called upon your secondary BNA, which maybe might be a builder, to come in and move you along, mm-hmm. because you everybody has this combination, and sometimes you have to dig down into these other combinations to move you forward. Otherwise, otherwise you get stuck in a ruck, stuck in a rut, stuck in a ruck. <laughs> I, that was that was my. Hey, uh, you're gonna do it? Do it. That was my yeah. innov- that was my innovator aspect. Right. I just came up with a new language, but. But the aspect is is that you sometimes Lexicons. you have to call in other skill sets that you have to move you forward and put you in out of your comfort zone. Right. So with the specialist now, back to what we were talking about previously, the strategies. Um, the strategy for a uh, yeah a specialist yeah is well, like a mastermind group rather than a peer advisory council. Well, pe- pe- they're both the same. I mean, there are different name sets, but the aspect is, is that a specialist needs somebody to move them along. A specialist needs someone to question as to what you really want to accomplish. And you find it in these type of groups is that, you know, the author talks about differences, but I think that you need people to move you along and you need people to ask you questions. Mm-hmm. And you have to really, the specialist has to really say, okay, I really want to move this forward what do I have to do to move it forward? And then they understand that. And the specialist oftentimes, uh, even as bad as the builder, gets stuck uh, you, you stuck in the rut. You, you can't see what you're saying either. Okay. No, I can't. And they don't know how to have fun. So one of the, the shifts that they can make in that process is to carve out some time to actually go out and have some fun. You know, I had a client years ago who's a financial advisor. And marriage broke up because he was unable to have fun. He was work, work, work. You know, they'd set some goals that they were accomplished them, um, but he didn't know how to have fun. So one of the things that, that we worked on was just to get him to get out for a couple hours, mm-hmm. you know, w- with or without the kids and just go do something that he, you know, go to the batting cage, go hit some balls, okay. you know. Well, so what he needs in a situation like that is he needs someone to really, whether it be a coach or whether it be a, a peer group, is to basically say, okay, we have a goal for you, and your goal for you is in the next month you're going to take a weekend vacation, right? Or you're going to go or go. But do I feel something. so guilty when I go do that. I'm oh. not. I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Well, then the question is, maybe you need. You have to. You have to go back. You don't and understand what you really need to be doing. Right. If you, you're, if your life's a mess, then you need to be doing something well, else. But the premise is they don't recognize their life's a mess, and therefore they have to really have a recognition of what the real needs are. So they and, need a good friend to come up and slap them upside the head, huh? Right. And they really say, if uh, in order for you to really move forward, sometimes you have to step back. How often do we have a, a, a good enough friend or coworker, uh, manager, subordinate, whatever, that is willing to stand up and call us on our stuff? Normally, you don't get it within a company because you have the aspect that the boss is a boss. But a friend will sometimes now. Do that's it. last century attitude. Well, new leadership likes to be challenged. Uh, people, or so they say. So they say. But people are people, and you talk about the holocaust. Yes, holocaust, we are the holocaustic. Uh, I was called a people once. Oh, you were called a people once. Well, yeah, I thought you were people. People purple leader or yeah. something like that. Purple people eater. Purple pumpkin. But people. you know, the, the, but they talk yeah. about leadership styles. Here we and, go with the peas again. Okay, but the aspect is you're talking about leadership style, and a lot of these different things are really fads because people are people, and you have to really look at look at, at the behavior. 
And for example, they talk about Zappos and the holocratic style. And since they went full force to this, there's a lot of difficulties going on there. Well, you're changing patterns. How many people are used to being autocratic or holographic? Well, people, you know, it, people we're used to being be, told. People want to be in the okay, comfort okay, zone. Huh? You talk to be in the no comfort zone. Did, did, oh. <laughs> okay. So with that, we're going to move on to the innovator because we need to have an innovative period right now. And we'll be right back with you to talk about the innovators. Thanks for listening. Two small biz guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. The digital world is vast. Is it working for you? Would you like some qualified help? Zen Benefiel is a wonder with social media who leads focused and organized workshops on multiple platforms like Facebook, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. He leads by example, not theory, and teaches you how to live large and lively on the web. From blogs to SEO, his web presence speaks for itself. Take advantage of his expertise. Visit BeTheDream.com and click on Web Wizardry. Hire him while you can. Business owners want to call their own shots, make appropriate income, and control their destiny. Our passion is to help you achieve your goals. A ProPeer Advisory Board is just the thing. It's a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners facilitated by a pro who has walked in your shoes. He's your mentor and tormentor moving you ahead. When you have issues or opportunities keeping you awake, where do you get help? Pro Boards give support and non-biased feedback from your peers. To sample a free Pro President's board meeting, email ray at propres.com. There's no commitment or charge. Email ray at propres.com. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefiel and Ray Silverstein. Well, we've been having a great time today so far, and, and here we are in our last segment. And by the way, uh, oh, BTW, you can go to our website, that's twosmallbizguys.com, and look for the article for today's show, which is called Entrepreneurial DNA. And on that page, you'll be able to download the Bozzy survey so that you can find out what your entrepreneurial DNA is, and then everything that we've been talking about might make sense to you, or it might not. And the aspect is you should know what it is because it will help you in how you structure your business, what you want to invest in, uh, it actually, and, and who you want to really bring into your business. Right. And, so. and now, which comes into being really innovative. So we're going to be talking about innovators. And, and one of the things that I think really leads into that is the, the self-assessment, being able to grow and learn and know yourself to the point where you really can, uh, like we were talking earlier, the innovators are the one that want, wants to change the world, right? right. We, we want to make a better place. Well, you've got to really know where you're at first and before you can have any idea of where you want to go, right? right. But the innovator generally, uh, they, since they want to change the world, they don't know how to go about changing it. Uh, so many times the innovator needs to bring in a different personality to help them get there. So, a, so we're back to the polyphrenia, huh? Yeah, right. We're back to polyphrenia, oh, whatever that polyphrenia, means. That means multiple personalities. Oh. You know, instead of schizophrenic, it's polyphrenic. And we all have different masks well, that we wear. So can, why can, don't we just get real and admit it? Right. right? I, I can spell multiple personality much easier than <laughs> polyphrenic. But, but the aspect is... is well, at least that, it's not a multiple personality uh, disorder. Right. We are very well, ordered. We know when to call them out. Well, sometimes. But the aspect yeah. is, is that the innovator... <laughs> works very well with the builder because the builder basically takes the concept like startups mm -hmm. and builds it up uh, to where it has yeah, to be. Yeah, the innovator pulls something out of the thought atmosphere and hands it off to the builder and the builder goes and takes the bricks and put it all, puts it all together and, and then you right. and then he includes the click and now you have a click and mortar oh, business. If that's what it is. Right. But the, but the innovator... I think in most businesses today are, can be classified as click and mortar. Well, okay. But the, the innovator does not work well... you don't have well, a web presence, you're... The innovator does not work well with the op opportunist because the opportunist wants it already established and they don't know how to put the foundation in. And all these type of businesses need a foundation to be, to be successful. 
So you, it, it worked very well. I think the innovator can also whether work whether it's well block or a cement yeah. slab. All right, or, we're going to slab. You know, we're just. But I think know, the innovator we're, we're can stub also, up out of that. The innovator can also work well with a specialist. But the problem there you have is you have two people or two groups of personalities which are risk adverse. So therefore, it becomes difficulty for them to build because someone has to be willing to take risk. Well, don't the innovators really, because of their breakthrough ideas and, and the freedom and, and resources that they use to develop uh, the concept and, and their uh, oh. things, and <laughs> you're supposed to turn that thing off before you come in here. I, did, um, I get so few phone calls, it's really shocking. Yeah, well, just don't answer it now. So, like I said, the, the innovator then tends to be able to provide um, things because they, they've got the ideas they've got the the resources now they don't necessarily work well inside the lab of a business organization right they have the they have to have the freedom to you know it's like management by walking around they've got to have the freedom to move around the they have, well, the they cabin. Have, well, they right. They have to have the freedom to do their. Who's thing. flying this aircraft no, anyway? They have to do have the freedom to do their thing to fly the aircraft. So, you a lot of, a lot of times you find that a business is started is that like by a barrel roll. Well, one moment you find a business is started by an innovator, but basically they have to hand it off to a management team, which might be the your S type of person mm -hmm. because they don't have the skill set. When you find a lot of people who are the your venture capitalists. When they're talking to an innovator personality, one of the concerns they all have is who is going to be the management team? Because the innovator normally are not good management people. So you need somebody but, to and take And they this. have to have the sense to know that and to be able to attract or find the right people around them who aren't like them. Yeah, that's, but the interesting part is you use it where they have to have the right sense. And sometimes they don't have that right sense. And therefore, they, they can't. So they have, have a left sense? Uh, they have no sense, and therefore they don't get the money because they don't get nonsense. No, they, no, no sense means no money. Uh, no money. See, see, in old years, no woman, no cry. See, in the eighteen eighties, it used to be no sense because that was all they had. Now, now it's no dollars. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. So innovators are notorious for not having a structured plan, as you said. We, we here. Look at that. I'm including myself in that. Innovatorship. <laughs> well, as well, long as it's not flying out, then well, we're, we're fine. I've but got, the aspect is, got is to remain grounded. Their their real strength is what let them create. And the, the, that sounds like a fiat. Well, I, I, let them create. Let them create. That's the idea. They. So you, when you have a, an innovator, you want to really want to give them the capability to let them create and and take it from there. And, and as of innovate, in, of innovator, <laughs> as an innovator. I want to make sure that I protect my intellectual property because that's one of the things that, especially today, innovators are known for is, is taking, you know, an idea and changing it. Okay, but yeah. the aspect is, uh, when you think about it, what DNA would be needed to assist in protecting the intellectual property? That would be a specialist. Right, because the specialist is going to think in those terms and you, you got to cross the T's, dot the I's to do that. The innovator says, no, this is a great idea. And they don't always want to take the time because they want to move on to the next idea because the mm -hmm. next idea is even better than the last one. So, so looking at from a, a quadrant standpoint, which is kind of how this is set up that with the B and the O in the top and the S and the I in the bottom, uh, builders and specialists have things in common, right? They, which is what you said. Um, they like to be very methodical and systematic in their approaches to business. So those two can have at least a long-term understanding and because they both plan long-term. Yeah, both of those could work with the innovator, yes. Because they both are, to a certain extent, process-orientated and uh, will be able to bring the management discipline to the business. And the discipline is a key factor there because they often tend to be prideful and self-reliant people, which means that you can't tell them anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that's well. I would say you you probably can't tell the builder. You can ask him a lot, but you can't tell him anything. Uh, the builder, I think, was probably harder to tell things to than the 
specialists. Sure, because they know where they're going, and you're not going to get in the way of them getting there. And, and yeah, so they're more. I think they're more driven, and they're or the driven aspect is is that we want to get there. I've done this. I'm. I'm. You know, I'm the successful entrepreneur because I built company A, and I want to. I built company B, and therefore I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, so it becomes. So a there you got systems and processes that are kind of integrated and both of them work well within those environments. Now, what about the, so that's the left quadrant. All right. So in the right quadrant, that's the opportunist and, and innovator. Um, both of them highly creative out of the box thinkers, but for different reasons. Right. Well, the innovators want product or service orientated and the opportunist is basically return driven. So the aspect is that they both want something done, but the the problem there is that you don't have anyone under, under that right side of the quadrant who really puts in the procedures and the format to really drive the business, to give mm -hmm. it the stability. Your opportunists might get it off the ground because they're great sales uh, and possibly they can sell the financing, but you need to, someone to, you need either a B or the S. And that's not BS to really bring the strength to the organization. And the BS is that they are most often are responsible for great changes in our world. These are the folks that really, you know, take the horn uh, and blow it. Well, the, I, I had something there, but it, it just, it failed. Well, the, the, the eyes. I had the wrong poly show up. Okay. Well, <laughs> whatever that poly is. But no. Yeah. But the aspect yeah, it was is, frantic is, instead of phrenic. I, I think the, the innovator really are the one who creates the changes, but the aspect is that if you don't have the S or the B there to help them move it forward, does the, does the change really stick? So there's a lot of great ideas that don't always stick, and you need, you need a like certain amount. It's like the one-hit of... wonders. I guess those would be the opportunists, huh? They just, you know, you've got the, the songwriter that puts something out, and it really hits, and they milk it, and there's nothing else. Well, that's... That could be, but the aspect is, is that the opportunist, because they, it's a short-term result, and then the question is, what are they going to hitch on to next time? So you have to hit your wagon. I you took have the to, words right out of my mouth. Right. The more the merrier is the approach to the right quadrant types. So the key, really, in, in personality DNA or entrepreneurial DNA is to know what you are and what other type of personality quadrant or major DNA that you need to assist you. So let's talk about the cross quadrants. Okay. okay so so let, let's play tic-tac-toe. We've got an X here, right? So you've got the specialist opportunist and builder innovator relationships. Now, how do those fit? Because they're kind of a yin-yang right. situation with each other. They're, they're both on ends of the spectrum, if you will. Well, the B and I, that's not the um, networking group, but the 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 BNI, BNI index? Yeah, the, but the BNI work well because the builder to work with the innovator to create the format and structure to move it forward. The, the S and the O also can work well together, providing that the O and the S can communicate because the S is very, very short-term sighted. And the, pardon me, not the, the O is very short-term sighted and the S is very long-term sighted and you mentioned something that is imperative communication we don't communicate they we have a failure to communicate in a lot of different ways when we're working with ourselves we don't know how to talk to ourselves a lot of times so it, it's kind of hard to talk to others if you know because we're whether we want to admit it or not we're usually pretty sensitive uh, we're very self, um, I don't want to say self-indulgent, but we're self-deprecating. You know, we're always beating up on ourselves because we feel like we make mistakes. And, and because we don't get the praise that maybe we deserve, um, we long for that. So how does that take place in, in, uh, how do you, in the communication network or the communication process? Okay. Okay. What you're really, how do you build on that? Okay, what you're really saying is what are the positive reinforcements for the people? There you go. And yeah. What are they? What, so, so the aspect is everybody has a different positive reinforcement, and you, when you work, we're going to hire you as an interpreter. Man. And when you when you have this cross section, or whether it be in whatever quadrant, or no matter what it is, you have to understand what drives the other person you're dealing with. And so, if you want to create 
you want to communicate with them in Ooh, a way. Now we're talking conflict resolution. In, right. in order to get through something, you first have, you know, everybody's got a dictionary they come to the table with. Right. So and the best to, way thing to do is to understand that other person's dictionary. That's right. So you have you know, you have to know the language they speak. So that's a dictionary. Which means you have to ask a lot of questions and shut up. That's listen. Right. Don't, don't be thinking what you want to say next. Actually, listen to what's coming out of the person's mouth. So, so you're and, so and, the, so the word is don't think. Is that it? That's that's the solution. Yeah, don't think, dummy. Don't um, think. You no, know, you do have. There's a process of thinking, and, and those thoughts are relative to being able to manage yourself more than it is. Okay, so the key the key here is to recognize who you are, and to recognize who, who you are, who, and who you are working with so that you can get the message across so you both get on the same team because business is really a teamwork and it, it absolutely is i remember that when michael jordan was playing basketball no man is an island into yeah, himself yeah. When, the, when he was playing basketball the coach at that time was saying uh there is no i in team and jordan would come back and said but there's an i in win yeah. So, and he brought them a lot. So you had a different personality format. So it becomes a question: What is the strength of the team? So, and, and is the the team able to rally around a prima donna and support that? Well, that was. And also, if you build a, the right team, they will. But it was also the right communication to right. and have the right people to support. So again, we're talking about who are the support players, who are the lead players, and understanding what the roles are within the business. Are you going to butter those roles? No, we're going to butter those roles, and we're going to have people call in or go into our website so they can find out what they are. Right, and you can actually get the the book from our website as well, Entrepreneurial DNA. Uh, when you go to the page that has this show on it, you'll see a form at the bottom of it. Uh, you can fill out your name and email, and you'll be able to download the uh, or. Actually, you'll, you'll download the, the crib notes for this show, and you can also get the Bozzy survey as well. So we look forward to seeing you show up at the website, and we thank you for listening. We hope we've entertained you and maybe given you some insight and, and uh, a little intelligence towards helping you build your own business. Thank you for listening to Two Small Biz Guys with Zen Benefio and Ray Silverstein. You can hear Two Small Biz Guys live every Wednesday at noon or catch their show on demand anytime 24-7 right here on StarWorldWideNetworks.com.